Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss uh, Linux versus Windows. So let's go through a slideshow first. The discussion is not uh, which one is better because they all have uh, their advantages and disadvantages. And mostly they're all advantages that you can uh, take advantage of operating system, whether it's Windows or Linux or Unix. Unix it could be Mac OS X or uh, uh, Solaris uh, BSD version or uh, uh, any other operating system uh, in the Solaris platform, uh, IREX SGI, uh, Sun Microsystem, and then uh, uh, FreeBSD. But in this uh, discussion, you might be just saying, why let's discuss about uh, Linux and Windows. So uh, that's the hot topic nowadays. Uh, Unix is uh, used a lot everywhere as well, but uh, most people are familiar with Windows and a Linux operating system. And you might be using it for school or you might be using it for uh, work or uh, at home. So let's discuss to see what are the advantages of uh, using Windows uh, operating system versus uh, Linux or using Linux versus Windows. Um, in particular, I'm going to just mention the point that uh, whether you like one or the other one, it's always your taste of uh, the uh, experience that you're using it as a user or as a developer or as a programmer or as a sysadmin or as a database administrator or a network administrator or just uh, on general purpose uh, work related or uh, game. So it depends on the usage of the person and each one of uh, you guys have your own preferences, which is uh, should be um, kind of um, uh, accepted by everybody, including myself. We are not uh, to judge anybody. It is your choice and uh, it's your software and hardware that is uh, running on your computer or at work, but it is good to know all of them. It, by knowing all of them, now you have a set of tools that you can do your tasks and projects and activities on a daily basis. So on a Windows, uh, I'm going to give you an example of the latest, greatest Windows operating system, which is Windows 11. And then on the Linux side, I'm uh, covering uh, Red Hat uh, uh, Enterprise Linux 9.2 or Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support or a Rocky Linux uh, Enterprise 9.2. So all of these ones are the latest and greatest operating system. They're very, very nice in terms of what they provide. Uh, I'm going to discuss Microsoft uh, Windows 11 first and uh, show you what uh, comes with Windows 11. First, um, Windows 11 was written by Microsoft uh, a company and then Microsoft had started with DOS, disk operating system, that was written by Bill Gates and then later on uh, developers and everybody uh, contributed. They started with Windows 3.1 and Windows NT, uh, Windows 95, and then Windows 7, Windows Vista, and then Windows 8, and then Windows 10. They never had a, a version 11, and I mean nine, but Windows 10 and Windows 11, and 11 being the latest and greatest now that they're on the market. And so, since it's a Microsoft uh, proper uh, proprietary software, it guarantees a higher stability, meaning that it's always stable, uh, that uh, the patches are released on a Tuesday of every month on the first uh, two weeks or the first week of the month uh, from Microsoft, and then everybody updates their uh, uh, the critical patch update as well as any vulnerabilities are detected. So the system is very stable. It is um, very uh, secure as well, because it is, um, I mean, uh, every software, when you're working by default, every computer at home, they have um, uh, Windows. Apparently, hackers and other ones, they are going to just hack it as soon as Microsoft release uh, the vulnerability on, uh, on a Tuesday. They will try to get into your PC or a laptop or desktop or a, a computer that you're running at work. So that's why you have to uh, make sure that the latest vulnerabilities are taken care of by patching your system. 
and then Windows is uh, not a, a very, very good choice for everybody to hack it because um, the majority of people either know a Windows uh, operating system or they work with Windows operating system. So um, users have great experience with uh, Windows. Uh, the graphical user interface, the list of uh, icons and then the dialog boxes that are available and then uh, whatever the user needs are, it's always uh, uh, provided by Microsoft with great uh, superior technical support to patch the system and then make sure that the graphical user interface is very nice and um, works by default. It also offers a broader integration and compatibility with other software. So a lot of the software that you're uh, working on, whether it's programming languages, whether it's um, some uh, uh, engineering software, some uh, scientific uh, uh, computation, some uh, games, some tiny things, the database and networking software, they're all compatible and they uh, work mostly on Windows platform uh, and everybody uh, contribute to the Windows platform for many, many years. So it's not something new that um, it is not supporting every uh, you know anything. It supports everything almost, and then uh, it is also by default works with everything, and it's kind of like a plug and play. Uh, you just have to uh, install the software and then uh, add a uh, device driver for it, and then uh, print something, and the printer would work. So those kind of options are all on the hardware uh, uh, as well as uh, the software. Windows uh, uh, 11 has a rich graphical user interface. So the uh, front end, when you log into the machine, it is very, very nice uh, GUI interface, which is a graphical user interface. And it also has the back end as a command line. Command line is very, very useful. It is started with DOS, a disk operating system, and then it uh, uh, translated since then on the command line with uh, command or CMD. Now they call it CMD for a while uh, with the store like maybe Windows um, 7 or something. But before that one when it was um, DOS 5.0, it was called command. Command.com was the uh, actual command interpreter. But um, right now it's also uh, command and CMD. And then there's all kind of um, files uh, you can run from command line executable files dot exact and then uh, dot com uh, which is uh, uh, binary uh, files and that are uh, dot batch file which is batch scripting and dot powershell for powershell and then dot pl for python uh, i mean dot pl would be um, uh, for uh, perl dot py would be python dot exact for c and c plus plus and so on and if that extension doesn't have to be a given uh, extension. You can always give a uh, name, but it is the header of the file determines what kind of binary or data or uh, scripting is it is, or a text file, or it is just, or a PDF file. All of that one is determined based on the header of the file. But from the command line, you can do Windows command line as well as PowerShell command lines, as well as programming languages like C, C++, Python, Java, uh, and Go language, whatever uh, language that you could do is uh, there's a compiler or an interpreter that comes in that you can use command line to compile it. And sometimes uh, the IDE integrate development environment, like for, for example, PyCharm or uh, Visual Studio Code or some other programming languages uh, for uh, uh, C, C++ or um, uh, let's say, for example, on uh, PyCharm, Visual Studio Code I mentioned, and then a BrainBench uh, or um, other applications that are available, you can use all of them on the GUI as well as command line. So uh, Windows 11 also has a very nice um, a start menu that is uh, in the center like Mac has the interface, everything in front of you on the center of uh, the menu. And then um, Windows 11 also moved uh, from the left side to the uh, center, which is very easy to use and very flexible. Uh, modernized file manager, the, that part is 
really new or uh, neat and then um, it allows you to do searches, uh, check all the commands that you do from command line, like copy, move, uh, uh, copy directory, make directory, all of those kind of things that you can do com uh, from command lines to the file manager. You can do the same thing with um, the graphical uh, file manager. It used to be called Explorer and it is uh, more modernized and then also works with uh, set file system. So if you just mount a, a common internet file system uh, through the net and then we can just see the net use command would be the command line and then on the file manager, you just uh, go to the set file system and um, uh, map a drive and then you all of a sudden you're on the storage of the network. So it has a lot of those uh, functionality. That's why it's called modernized. Plus Microsoft, the store is uh, available with Windows 11. So you can uh, install a lot of your favorite apps and other software and games and everything. So you can just use those ones to just uh, install additional apps or software that uh, you want. For example, if you want Python or PyCharm or something like Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, you might look at it, the apps, and then sometimes they come in on the app store. Sometimes if they are not available, you can use it uh, with Pepper or something to just install it again. Device manager and plugin uh, play. Device manager shows you option to control all your devices and look at the device drivers, install device drivers and control, give you full uh, access to everything. So plug and play works uh, if you add on a USB drive or a, uh, a additional storage that you want to allocate or maybe uh, create a, a new uh, printer or anything that is all just um, available for you at the finger tips of your uh, commands. Task manager, it has a task manager that you can check, monitor uh, your system and the processes and then how much CPU usage it. Uh, all of the resources, you can manage it, basically whether it's CPU, memory, I.O., uh, and every other activity through the task manager, you can control the processes as well as um, you can stop and start processes and control them, basically. Uh, great compatible with other software. That has been uh, from day one with Microsoft and a lot of the users that are happy because a lot of the software that always works with uh, um, Microsoft or Windows 11 or Windows 10 or Windows 8. It doesn't, you don't have to be a, a admin or a developer to uh, operate on a Windows operating system. It, but, uh, the default always works. You just click on it and follow a few steps and then you're done with it. And, and the user friendliness is very, very uh, nice. Uh, Windows and um, Linux are all uh, user friendly nowadays. Um, like uh, Windows user uh, friendliness uh, is also provided on Linux platform. They both have a, a graphical user interface as well as command line. But in order to be very powerful and uh, just make the operating system your best friend, you have to learn the command line or the Linux terminal window. And then that would just uh, make you behind the um, options of the graphical user interface icons, it will make you a power user. So you can just run a batch script or a shell script or run commands and uh, just uh, do automation on your system. So we're talking about Linux and this example is uh, the Fedora distribution. Red Hat is a Fedora distribution and the version that we are talking about is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.2 and this example it guarantees higher uh, stability. So your system is always available, uh, accessibility, reliability, stability is part of the operating system that is started with Unix as well as Linux and also uh, on the Windows side as well. But uh, the nice thing about Linux is that if you have to patch it, most of the time you can do um, individual patches as well as uh, system patches and update and even upgrade. Uh, most of them does not require a reboot. But on the Windows side, uh, unfortunately, some of the patches may require one or more uh, reboot. So your system has to be scheduled for maintenance 
evidence production. However, on the Linux side, uh, and obviously on Windows side, the same thing, you have to have redundancies and backup and uh, uh, system with uh, production, integration, and development uh, separated. That way you can control it, make sure that any of the vulnerability that was detected when you patch it, it does not cause your system to be down after the maintenance window. So uh, a lot of the work that you do as an admin or as a developer, it depends on your uh, kind of uh, policies and rules of the company. But if you do it for your home computer, you don't have to worry about too much about uh, downtime because those are your laptops or PCs that you can always shut down when you're done with your work. Um, software is often more secure. That is because a lot of the encryption and software SSL, TLS, and then uh, encryption, decryption, all of those ones, open SSH, open SSL. It has started with the Unix and Linux, and it has been on the market for all the operating system, whether it's a Linux platform or Windows platform, and they all provide that one. Better user experience, uh, Red Hat also, like I mentioned, is uh, provide a graphical user interface, as well as a terminal. So the uh, option of having both a graphical user interface as well as terminal command line, then it, uh, the user feels very safe and very reliable and uh, the system is always uh, available for it in a uh, stable system. And if you have any issue, obviously you have to uh, pay for support uh, in, in terms of package uh, and subscription. For Red Hat, you have to buy the uh, subscription if it's a corporate account, but if it is developer account, uh, it's a free for one year, and every year you have to uh, get the subscription uh, renewed. But um, when uh, you get technical support, then, so some of the patches and upgrades, uh, if there is a bug that has to be corrected, technical support is behind it uh, there. Or if there's some knowledge that you got got purchased production machine for a physical machine, they provide a lot more support. For virtual machine, sometimes it is uh, self-support. So as an admin or developer, you have to know what to do. And it offers better integration and compatibility because it's open source. It works with uh, GNU and uh, general public license software that are open source. So it, it works with every other um, uh, open source software because Red Hat and Linux started with uh, that in mind on GNU project. Uh, Linus Trobert uh, just basically uh, wrote the kernel and they put the kernel together with GNU utilities. And they come up with these flavor of uh, Red Hat or Rocky or CentOS on the Fedora distribution and uh, Ubuntu on the Debian distribution, uh, Ment on Debian and uh, OpenSUSE and then so on. There's so many other ones that are there based on their distribution that are available on the market uh, nowadays. You don't have to purchase uh, the software. The software is mostly free, but if you want uh, like support, then you have to pay for the software support as well. And then uh, provides parallel processing in HFPC. This is something that the Windows does not, uh, I have not, work on any Windows platform that uh, provides high performance computing, which is supercomputer environment. We, uh, nowadays we call it the supercomputer environment. Mostly it was long, long time ago it was on uh, IBM, uh, I'm mean, sorry, on mainframe, uh, IBM 3270s that we uh, did assembly language back in uh, college years. Uh, and then uh, some of them were, um, Vax BMS stuff and the, those ones were for universities and militaries and then at some point all of those ones are nowadays is uh, even though they call it supercomputing at one point those ones were not our mainframes they were not uh, as powerful and their me memory footprint was very very small so a, a, a laptop of um, uh, could uh, beat all of them or even a cell phone it's much faster than the supercomputer of 90, uh, 95, for example, back on the, those days. But then uh, there are supercomputer that are running uh, either uh, Unix or uh, Linux 
or in particular, for example, the one that I work with uh, is uh, on TAC, Texas uh, University of Texas, uh, Texas Automation Supercomputing. Uh, Frontier was there, which was uh, Rocky Linux and um, uh, Open Suzy Linux with Lone Star uh, 5 and 6. And there's a number of other operating systems that they support now. Uh, at one point was CentOS, CentOS, and we got end of life. And it become uh, the one that we had was Lone Star 5. One was Open Suzy version 13. And then we also worked on Frontier, which was Rocky. And then also work on other ones. Uh, uh, currently, I'm working on Lone Star Flex, which is also a, a Linux uh, a Rocky version. And then there's a number of them that uh, we have worked on it. Uh, also on Galica, the Jet Proportion Laboratory, JPL, we are using supercomputing environment. Uh, and then we're uh, having these uh, parallel uh, processing and thousands of processors and terabyte of uh, memory sometimes it's just allowed you to run an uh, operation of a petabyte and per second so that supercomputing environment or uh, parallel processing the operating system has to be able to handle it and if the operating system is not written for that purpose then you cannot use it uh, and what i was saying that uh, so far my 30 years i have never worked on a windows operating system uh, that has HPC kind of high performance computing uh, platform. Everything was on Unix and Linux uh, side. So that is uh, something to uh, look at, but uh, it is not uh, saying anything negative on that side of uh, Windows because Windows has a lot of powerful servers as well that you could configure to do that such a thing. I just did not work on uh, those platforms. Mostly I worked on Linux or Unix platform or Solaris platform uh, back in the old days. And then um, uh, Mac is also doing a lot of stuff, Mac BSD. Mac BSD is uh, Mac OS X, uh, BSD, Berkeley Software Distributions, based on BSD operating system. And it is uh, just uh, available for both um, kind of like uh, the graphical user interface, the terminal that Linux has, the look and feel is very, very uh, stable, like uh, like um, Windows. So Rocky is just look at this information. Everything that I co covered on the Red Hat, I'm not going to duplicate the same one. Uh, Rocky is the only uh, difference between Rocky and Red Hat is uh, Rocky is uh, the community edition of uh, Linux uh, that is um, exactly the same thing that uh, Red Hat has but Red Hat uh, is purchased by IBM and Rocky is the open source or community enterprise edition that replaces the CENT, CentOS OS. C, uh, uh, Cent OS, which is C stands for the community, ENT is enterprise and OS is operating system. So Rocky replaced um, uh, CentOS and then it has been in the market and it is very stable operating system, very user-friendly, very uh, nice uh, graphical user interface, very secure, and you can patch it. We're running a DNF uh, update or DNF upgrade to upgrade it, and you're done. And then also Rocky is uh, running on a, a high-performance computing or parallel processing with supercomputing environment if people uh, configure so. And then and Linux Ubuntu is similar. Uh, you can do um, high performance computing on that one also, but the one that I work is mostly on the desktop and then server side and core. Uh, there's three type of it that Ubuntu provides, which is a desktop, a server, and a core part. The core part is mostly as like if you want a developer, you can do that developer side. If you want to configure it for a mail server, you could do it for based on that uh, one. But the workstation is very much like a desktop, and then it allows you to uh, do everything that a, a user can uh, has the need for it. Uh, it guarantees a higher stability. Software is often more secure, uh, better user experience for the same reason that Windows has a graphical user interface as well as a terminal. And then the technical support is uh, there available. 
but at a cost. You have to purchase it in order to get support. Um, offers broader integration and compatibility, so you can install app uh, through package uh, manager, uh, uh, app application package uh, toolkit, and then uh, also you can use Snap, which is a containerization version of uh, these uh, packages on uh, Red Hat. Uh, on uh, was uh, RPM, Red Hat Package Manager. On the Ubuntu, it is Snap. And then uh, apt for um, installing all these other, other packages. On uh, Rocky and um, Rocky CentOS in um, uh, Red Hat, uh, you have uh, the option of RPM as well as YAM, uh, Yellow Dog Update Manager, as well as uh, DNF the new uh, uh, YAM, D DNF. DNF is, uh, YAM is symbolic link to DNF-3 and DNF uh, also symbolic to DNF-3 and DNF-3 is uh, just basically a uh, Python script. But this uh, one uses a snap and app. That's what I mentioned for Ubuntu. Uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. Our channel is at youtube.com and the address is at my web university. Uh, that is uh, the URL there. And then uh, I have posted also uh, the actual uh, channel, how it looks uh, with uh, my web university as the handle. And then if you, um, the way to uh, subscribe, you just log into YouTube on the sign in and then click on the subscribe. If you have already done so, Thank you so much for your subscription. I'm gonna just uh, demonstrate right now uh, the actual um, look and feel of it. So before I uh, start the VM, uh, let's just uh, click on the first one. We're gonna start with Ubuntu and we'll, we're gonna click on uh, start button here. And then notice that as soon as I click on the start, the host operating system is Windows here. And then the, the virtual machine that I'm running is uh, VirtualBox uh, 7.0, but I created a virtual machine of Ubuntu and uh, look at this right now, it's booting uh, Ubuntu. But before this one shows up, this login, which I already did, I'm not gonna log in, I'm gonna just show you uh, uh, the background images here. So let's look at this one and this background image, you can see that I'm running a Windows operating system. And this is Windows 11. And this is the start menu that you have to start here. You can just see all the icons that are available. So one of the software that I'm using is here, uh, Oracle VirtualBox, or you can see icon here, which I just uh, opened this one. So all of these other software that was add-on software, like Visual Studio Code or Google Chrome or OpenSSH or, um, or a recycle van, all of these ones are additional things that are either uh, part of the operating system or it is add-on software. For example, uh, uh, MySQL is an add-on software uh, or PyCharm is an add-on software. Uh, the Windows itself comes with Microsoft Edge, but then I decided to install the Chrome or um, uh, Firefox uh, additional software. And this Xming is for uh, X work uh, kind of graphical user interface on the uh, X window, we call it, uh, that you can just configure another machine to uh, expose uh, your graphic to the other machine. There's all these start button that you have all of this software that I can uh, bring it up, or I can just type in the command here. So if I just want to open a command from, I can just uh, click here, open a command from, and then say, well, if I want to know the system information, I could say system info. And then if I say find string slash i, and then I say OS name, then I could just get the operating system information, which is going to tell me it's Microsoft version uh, Windows 11. And then this is the built version and so on. And then this is like uh, the details of the system if I want to see that uh, bias version or other ones. So if I'm interested on memory to see how much memory I have, I run the same command system info with find a string and just type in the string mem that is gonna match this. And it's gonna say that you have 32 gigabyte and currently 23 gig is available. 
So similarly, I can right click here and open task manager and I can get that information from graphical user interface by clicking here and uh, notice the CPU is here and it says uh, uh, the usage of the CPU uh, and uh, also for memory, the usage on memory. You can see that it's currently um, 22.7 gig out of the 32 gig is available. And I can check on my disk usage. I can uh, see the ethernet cable, the network, and then the Wi-Fi connections, the graphical uh, processing unit, GPU, all of that when I can look, or I could say, well, I did this one, and let's get this one for a model of the architecture. It is uh, what type of hardware I have. And it says you have an Intel 64-bit family with uh, 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 3.4 gigahertz speed. And then it is a mini IT11. So if I say, what is my host name? I can type in host name, and it says the host name is algorithm. So if I just go on the GUI and I say about this PC, then I can get this help without knowing those commands. A user might just say, well, Wahid, you know those commands, but I want to just click on the graphical interface and get the same information. Notice I click on the about page and it says your host name is algorithm. The name of the PC, the type of is mini IT11. And then it's an 11 generation Intel with i7 core at 3.4 gigahertz speed. You have 32 gigabytes of memory and so on. So then I say, okay, that's good. Let me just see if I could get some other information through a GUI uh, type in device manager. And I was telling you at control a panel or device manager, you can get a lot of information. So here are the whole computer information. For each of these tab, you click about this PC 64 bit, you can get that information. The disk drives, you can get it, uh, display adapter, every one of them, you click on it, you can uh, expand it. Or for example, on the processor, let's look at the processor. If I want to know how many processor I have, uh, how many cores I have, I click on the processor and it's eight of them. And then the speed is 3.4 gigahertz. And the type of the processor is 11 generation Intel i7 right here, as you can see. So it does give you a lot of details, each one of these information that you can click on, as well as the graphical user interface. If I want to just run a command like calculator here, I type in calc from the command line and I open the calculator. And similarly, if I just type in calc at the uh, graphical, so user friendliness is all there. You just click on it. If you want to open a notepad, you just say notepad, here and then you just open a notepad that says this is a test and then go file and save and so on. If I just wrote something, now it is aware that, okay, he uh, wrote something. It says, do you want to save it? I say, no, don't save. And then the same thing here, at the uh, command line, if I say notepad, it will open it. But if I didn't save and write anything, it's not going to prompt me for saving it. Uh, at the same time, if I just click on any of these uh, browsers, uh, like for example, let's say I open Chrome and then it opens Chrome. And then if I say, go to my site um, uh, called, um, uh, let's say youtube.com, youtube.com at uh, my web university. My web university, this is the file handle. So it goes to youtube.com and it finds my address at, uh, my channel address at my university and it opens the channel. So you could uh, see that it is um, all available for you that you can just watch all these videos and enjoy them. So if you click on the videos, for example, you could see that they're all available on the, on the computer science uh, operating system, uh, databases, uh, programming languages, you know, IT, computing, everything that is uh, there, shell scripting, uh, classes from zero to hero. There's all, all kind of courses that are there. And uh, if you want to just go to playlists, they are categorized by different subjects. So whether it's Windows or Solaris or uh, Unix or Python or shell scripting or C++ or advanced uh, Unix or, or Linux, you can just uh, look at them and then uh, start uh, learning them. 
Uh, let's close this one. So on this tab, you can just click another tab and say, okay, let's just uh, go to uh, check on uh, docs.python.org. Docs you can see that it's uh, taking you to Python. Uh, doc, uh, so if you go python.org, it's going to take you there. And if you say, uh, take me to Amazon, uh, Amazon.com, uh, wherever you uh, want to meet, you go to uh, csuf.com, uh, 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 dot Cal State University Fullerton, and it will brings up the Fullerton.edu. Uh, so Fullerton.edu, it will just go to www.fullerton. Uh, let me see if the name is, uh, if the name changed, fullerton.edu. Uh, if it, the name changed, yeah, it is not. So it is uh, fullerton.edu. You will just go to that. Similarly, for your university and other ones, uh, you go, usually I go to my um, uh, work uh, place, uh, Jet Proportion Laboratory, jpl.nasa.gov. There's a lot of space and uh, scientific uh, kind of uh, classes and trainings and multimedia, things that you could enjoy and watch it and understand it. There's a lot of stuff uh, there. So you're welcome to see a lot of robotics and uh, high performance computing there um, with uh, in action and uh, the application of it, like these robots, how they work and other things. So uh, what I'm gonna do is close, like for example, if I, Go and open another tab. I could say, uh, go to www.mywebuniversity.com. That's my actual website. And then I provide this one um, for a long time now. It is a lot of thousands of uh, documentation and uh, stuff for you to learn. Just this book is online for uh, for free. And uh, if you are interested in learning uh, the C and C++ header files, there's a couple of thousands of the header files. Each one of them, you click on it, you just get a uh, documentation here uh, that you can read on it. And then similarly, if you go on chapter eight, for example, I have more than 6,500 technical documentation of uh, Linux, Ubuntu, manual pages uh, that are all available here. So every one of them you click on, you will get a PDF file documentation that you can just read and uh, understand it. Similarly, if like if you click here, and if you're interested, uh, control F here, and then say, let's say you're looking for a uh, printf uh, function. So there's a number of them you could do it, or say, uh, show me, uh, let's say Python, and then a Python uh, 3 is there. So if you just look at it, and it uh, gives you all the details here, and then you start reading it and understanding. Uh, and then um, control F. Or sometimes you could uh, make this screen a little bit bigger. I made it a bit too small. So here you could do a you know, plus, control plus, and then uh, change it, and then uh, just look at them with the details of that one. And there's a lot of other ones for Windows also. Help uh, underscore PDF. For example, if you're looking for Windows related uh, documentation, this table not uh, nicely provide you. So if you're looking at the, uh, if you're in front of your computer, uh, clear clear screen here, you say help here, it provides you all those commands. But if you uh, are in front of the computer, say help, uh, let's say copy command, you will get this, um, but uh, how about help X copy or uh, clear screen, clear screen and help um, system info. So a lot of these commands that are there, you can see even examples here. But what if you're not in front of a computer and you're looking for it? So I made it uh, available here um, in a table. Let me just make it a little bit smaller so you could see um, it is Windows help command. And then I said, well, if somebody is not in front of a computer, similarly, the way I showed you those 6,500 PDF files on uh, Linux, all these 200 or 300 commands that are here, I made it for uh, Windows. And so you could uh, get it uh, for that one. Like system information, you can do control F or search it here and you get a PDF version here. Same examples that are showing here and there is there. 
So if you do like, for example, control F and uh, say find command or find a string, and then it, it just the example that I showed you, here's the uh, actual help for it. That's why you would memorize it and then use the, the commands here. Um, so the uh, Linux environment, I'm gonna close these uh, browsers here. I'm going to show you uh, this taskbar and then I already showed you like uh, the system. So with Windows, there's a lot of uh, nice stuff as well as you can do commands on the GUI. So if I just uh, clear a screen, say uh, run the directory command or say uh, clear a screen, say uh, let's say host name and then I say um, uh, copy, let's say make a directory test and then say cd to test and now say um, uh, this directory is empty, but I could say uh, create a file called dir.txt, which is not uh, nothing on that file type dir.txt. These are all Windows commands. So now I just have on this directory a file called dir.txt that is empty uh, and with the, the directory list, but the content of the file is this directory information here. So I could say delete uh, dir.txt and it is deleted. Here now it is empty. So I go out here and say directory of dir directory of test. I created that one. I say or in dir uh, test uh, now deleted. So the directory of dir uh, that one that was there before it is no longer there. And uh, if you do a, a dir of um, dir of test, it says no such file there. If you say volume name, it says say give me the command uh, and open the command prompt. You can do a lot of commands here that are uh, very friendly, but at the same time, you could also run, like give me the Python version and say dash dash version, say, what is my Python interpreter? So I could say, uh, go ahead inside Python 3 and then just uh, open the 3.10.11, run the directory command, and then let's just run a, a few commands from the command line here. You could say, for example, uh, import OS and OS.system. Whatever command that I, we type in here, uh, we can do OS.system and just say run the, uh, that command. And then if you want to do a directory command, you do that. And um, you want to do clear the screen, you just do a CLS and it will do that. And then you want to get the help. Uh, commands of those ones, you get that. So every information that are there, if I just clear the screen, and then instead of this one, I could say system info uh, pipe find a string slash i, and then I'm going to say OS name, OS name. Notice this one, uh, I put a single code here and then double code here. So that's the, the difference in Python. It will run if I just change this one to single code because I have this outside uh, single code. It will say you started here, you finished it here. It will not work. So if you start double code here, then you start single code here or skip it with backslash. So notice this is there. At the same time, if I just do uh, only do find command, you can just see that the OS name is there. The reason is that this find a string is going to be like recursively. So it looks for the OS, which is all these one that has OS is going to be kicked, uh, found as well as the name. So the name is there. When you do a find, it only looks for this string uh, where this uh, occurred. And this string is there. The slash I means ignore the case. So without the slash I, if I just don't do it, it doesn't work. So that is, um, the difference between Windows versus uh, uh, Linux. Windows is uh, not case sensitive, Linux is, but Python is case sensitive. When you're running this command inside the, uh, the fight, uh, find command, so uh, since I did not give the flag of slash I, the Python operating system is gonna just look at it. If I do the same uh, command in the uh, command line, it still uh, is going to just return uh, a one, meaning that was not successful. So I'm gonna show you that one. But notice that if I just put this one OS, 
this is not it's still not going to find it because the name is not matching but if i just change the name to uppercase n and then now i'm going to find that information that i found it so without slash i it was still uh, detected but because i put exact word that is uh, found on the output there so if i exit out of this one and then i do the same command here I'm going to cut and paste this one because I don't want to type the same thing exactly. And now the, this one finds it. And then if I do this one with lowercase n, it should not find it because I did not tell it to use the fl uh, flag find. So if I say find um, help find, you can see the slash i is a flag that you say ignore the case sensitivity. So when you're learning an operating system, Based on the operating system syntax, you have to know what you're doing. If we do the same thing on a Linux, the find command is a grep command, global regular expression, which I'm going to show you next. So now let's look at the uh, part where we are looking at a Linux server. On a Linux server, for example, I brought this one up and I'm going to log in as myself. When you authenticate, It's going to just go through the authentication, verify the username and password is valid. Then it opens this nice graphical user interface. The graphical user interface, you, you can change the setting. And every time you could change, say, change the background, you have these options. By default, it is this. So when you come in, it is this by default when you install it. But you can change it to say, change the background and just click on whichever background that most interest you. So I like this one. I'm going to go with that one. And then I say, this is good. Now I just change it. See how it is user friendly. We were just talking about the Some people, they say you, it's not user friendly. It's not the case anymore. Uh, Unix and Linux are user friendly. The more you know them from the graphical user interface, and uh, the more you know them from the terminal or command line, the better uh, best friend you become with, with them, each other. Uh, so you have to know the environment and you will become their best friends. They uh, chose their best friend, basically. So uh, right here, you have all these icons and then you can click on the icons to uh, start Firefox or Thunderbird Mail or uh, File Manager or uh, Red Inbox and then this is a LibreOffice, similar to Microsoft Office. So if you just start off with this one, for example, and this is open source, and then you can see that on this one, we have option of writing a saying, uh, let's say, LibreOffice is awesome. Let's say I write that one. Um, let me correct that one. Is all so. So we do that one, and I'm going to change this one uh, from the text font to, let's say, 32, and that's big enough. And I could just change uh, uh, to make it bold, to make it uh, italicized, make it underlined. Same thing that you do at Microsoft Office and Subscript and all these other options. You can take it out. You can uh, just change the font size and make it bigger or make it smaller or however you want it. And then um, there's a different uh, size. And then if you want to do a color, if you just click on this one and you just change the color to green and then you say, well, the size, I didn't want it to back to 12, I want it big. You can just click on it and it will just do it. And if you decided to say, I want it bold also, you could do that. But this is just an example of uh, a lot of these other things are there and started in one format and everything else as you open. You can create tables, forms, and so on. But I'm going to just um, close this one. When you close this one, it's going to prompt me, say, do you want to save it? I say, no, don't save it because I don't need to. And then now, uh, since I open uh, LibreOffice, open Office, you can see that here, there's a lot of other. Uh, this was the writer. If I want to open calculator, it's, I get calculator here. And then uh, that's Excel uh, equivalent to Microsoft Office. So I'm going to close that one also. And then I have uh, Impress for uh, PowerPoint presentation. 
So if I like this uh, template, I click on it and then I, I start using the uh, template and then make uh, changes on all, everything and then I post it. So uh, here I close it, let's say don't uh, save anything and then uh, draw. For drawing, you can have all these images. Imagine if you just draw something here and then just cut and paste and uh, bullets, uh, all of these ones, anything that you wanna do, uh, flow charts and then you could say, Let's put this flow charts here with this uh, and that, whatever. And then you can make a, schem a schematic or anything. So it is all uh, option available. How simple is that one? And then uh, on the same time, user friendly, close and don't save it. So then I could also have a, a math formula for uh, doing computation and other uh, math here. There's all kind of uh, operation. You can do binary operation calling a function and so on. There's so many things, right? Set operation and so on. So I'm gonna close this one also. Exit the entire LibreOffice, say don't save it. So it is there. And then some of these software like uh, Ubuntu software, if I have not done update on it, I uh, could just click on the update. Uh, yesterday I did the update and I could just say, Snap D needs to be updated. So then I click update all and it will just uh, prompt me for the password. And so everything that you can do from the command line, you can also do it on the GUI uh, mode. So right now it is uh, updating this one. And then I can also minimize this window and say, okay, let me just uh, open a terminal here. And then on the terminal, I'm gonna say CD out, clear the screen here and cat minus n etc os dash release you can see sorry clear the screen cat uh, minus n etc os dash release it shows that i have a one to 22.04 long-term support the name of the code is jammy jellyfish and so on so you can see i have everything here and then i can say well um wh what about app less command can I get all the list? Yes, all the packages are there. I can also say word count minus L. You can see that there's 76,000 packages there. And similarly, if I say snap list, all the packages that are installed here as a snap, and then I can uh, just uh, see them. So like Opera is there, so I can just say clear screen, snap a list, Opera, and then if I just want to get information on that package, I could do that. And then uh, similarly, if I want to say which opera, it is there. So I could say, yeah, that binary, I like it. Let's just start the opera browser. And similarly, you can do that Chrome uh, to open a Chrome browser or Firefox browser. So here's the browser for it. And then if you want to say uh, visit google.com, it will just go there. Uh, visit mywebuniversity.com, it will visit that one. But uh, if it is a secure page, and since it is a secure page, I have to type in the dot, dot, dot here, and that would uh, take it to a HTTPS secure page uh, there. So uh, at this time, if I just say, well, this is good opera, I do wanna see all of the details here, um, I could, um, let me just close this one. And then on this terminal, since I started the Opera, it is on the background. This is uh, what is uh, uh, sending all the details of the output there. And it's going to be there. And then I'm done with it. So I clear screen, say snap a list of Firefox. So whether I double click here on Firefox or uh, just uh, start Firefox, I could do that one here. And then similarly, uh, say which uh, Chromium, and then Chromium say, um, uh, for example, start Chromium, and that would uh, open up Google. And like I, as I went to uh, jpl.nasa.gov, you can see that it is opening a jet propulsion laboratory in uh, NASA and all the nice, uh, graphic uh, multimedia images uh, that are there, it is uh, showing you. Um, so the other thing that you could do is run uh, some of these one from command line. 
from command line, you could do a lot of stuff. But um, let me just close this one. And then right here, clear the screen and say, um, snap a list of Chromium. You can see that package is there. So if I snap a list of Firefox, I could get that a snap info uh, Firefox. How easy it is, right? So uh, clear the screen, app a list, and then uh, the LibreOffice, LibreOffice. If it is installed, it, it will tell you there that the version is there. So clear screen and then say uh, Debian PKG dash L uh, give you all the packages that are there. All the packages. Debian PKG is the mother of all package manager, which, whether you're using apt or um, apt or um, snap. So um, Debian PKG dash L and then grip minus I library office, you can see that one, there's a number of them. So if I say dash writer for the writer, I'll get that in, or dash calculator for the calculator, I could get, uh, get this one. So the power of command line is that it gives you a lot more in the terminal session that you can write even a script to do certain things with it and then uh, do interactive uh, scripting also. So like for example here, I uh, created those directories or something. Let's go to this programs and I'm gonna go to C++. So let's say on the C++, we have uh, all the files.c++. If I wanna see the content of all of this one and just see it, I can do a, a cat mine, say, sorry, cat mine, cat minus n start of C++ that would display all of them uh, in uh, there. So it uh, says that for some reason, let me just see what happened here. Oh, C++. So this, this just did all of them in one shot, but uh, because it did it so fast, it did it so fast, if I just do this, I wanna do a pipe more. And then that way, each of the script that comes in, it is gonna come with the number of lines that is there till it finished. But what you could do is say, let's mind the cell start of C++. And now say, let's do uh, some kind of awk and then uh, print dollar sign nine. So we just get the name of the files here. And then at the same time, let's do this and say, while interactive programming, while read, um, a variable, so the name of the file, or could say while read file, and then I say do, and then I say um, echo uh, minus e, or I, I could just say echo working on a dollar sign a file now, and then I just say, just to see that one, I say sleep two second. And then I give a timestamp and then uh, wait another sleep, another two seconds, so we can see the difference. And then I could say, uh, get, give me a stat, a stat of that file, a stat dollar sign file, and then do a, a, another um, date command, and then sleep another uh, one second. And this time I'm gonna do uh, let's minus LD dollar sign file, and then sleep another uh, two second and then this one I'm going to do cat minus n and dollar sign uh, file and then run the date command and then sleep one second. So it's going to be a few uh, seconds between each files, two plus two plus uh, one plus uh, that's eight of them, right? So six plus two is eight. And then I'm going to just uh, run this one and say Working on date.c++, it ran the date command. Now it does a, a, a less minus LD, cat it, and then works on the next file. Now working on the other file, it's doing the same thing. So the power of programming is that this .c++ could be thousands of files. Now you can just put it and put it into another file or do something with it, move them, rename them, Look how much uh, in the interactive shell scripting as a developer you can do. So these kind of uh, information sometimes on the 
high performance computing, you run it on uh, thousands of uh, data on a big data or supercomputing environment, I could do a lot of uh, neat stuff here. And then uh, the power of the user plus the power of programming it, uh, comes in place as well as what you're planning to do. All of a sudden, you will be running this program and then your boss might give you some assignment to do so, so, so something and then they are expecting it to finish in a week or a month and you finish it in less than an hour because a supercomputing environment is all available for you. When you do automation, your script runs while you're sleeping. Uh, people make uh, money on Amazon Web Services or, or Amazon uh, stores and running their business online when they are asleep. Same thing you could do it with uh, everything uh, through automation. You can write uh, cron jobs or scripts or programs that run on the system that's the same kind of computation depending on your processor and speed and then the uh, operating system you use. You could be working on the finance uh, stuff, weather stuff, uh, uh, you know, scientific computation, everything, and you get the output there. So like, for example, here, uh, look, uh, if I just clear the screen, uh, just inside in this directory, if I get out here and I say, well, I'm just uh, get out, what kind of programming uh, uh, languages are there? There's a number of them. So if I go to Python here, and then here you have a number of Python scripts here. So everything that I want to do, I can just run them through the Python script and execute them similarly the way that I did it there. And then um, the extension.py would be just one of them. So, okay, on the Python directory, I'm going to uh, show you one example, for example, for sys module. The name of the script is mysys.py, as you can see here, and it is executable, but I want to show you the content of this file first. So if I do a cat minus n mysys.py, it uh, looks for um, importing the sys module, and then on this line, it is just basically looking at the number of argument that is passed. If I just run this one without the uh, correct amount of uh, argument is going to just say not enough argument. It has to have three argument. So if I just say, well, let's give it three argument, one, two, three, three argument. So then it says that you provided um, three argument, then it adds up the first uh, two numbers and it gives a, a value for it. Then it says the argument that you gave, the first uh, name was the argument uh, of the name of the script. The first argument was one, and then the second argument was two and that. But I could just uh, give a different value on it by just saying that, okay, the value of uh, 10, and let's say um, 20 and then 50. It doesn't have to be in that same order. It doesn't have to be uh, all the time there. Whatever 503 you provide, it's gonna say your argument was 503. And then it adds up those numbers. So if you look at the cat on the content of this file, sorry, if I look at the cat on the contents of the file, it says that it's um, adding this one. So if the number or argument is a number, then it's gonna convert it to an integer. So you cannot put a string because a string uh, does not have a equivalent value, but it is expecting some numbers and then it's gonna convert it to integer and then it's going to just uh, sum it up. But uh, the idea is that no matter what argument the user gave, here you could say, let's say 11, uh, 55, and 100. So it is going to just do those numbers, 11 and 55 is added 66, and then the two numbers are there. Similarly, if I just go out uh, one directory into my shells step, and then I say, okay, on this one, how many shell scripts? I have a lot of them. So for just for the demo, I have this loop directory, which is learn Unix by example. And then I have this demos directory here. I could just show you like, for example, the welcome the, the search script. It is uh, just uh, saying that welcome uh, to my web university or local host, whatever is the name of my channel. 
it is uh, printing you uh, in a nice uh, uh, format. But notice here, I'm using a utility called a laugh out loud uh, cat, which is giving you whatever command you type in here. If you want it in color, you could say laugh out loud cat, and it will just do that in color. So if I say ls, and then I want to say ls with laugh out loud cat, it will just uh, change it there. If I say echo uh, test, and then pipe it to laugh out loud cat, it will just do that. And every time you run it, you get a different color uh, on that one. And if you don't do it without it, obviously it is the white uh, text font. But then uh, what I want to show you on the welcome screen, so if I just uh, run a clear screen and say welcome dot search, then it's going to run uh, that many times, 10 times, this uh, within a for statement, and those ones, uh, and then it is going to give you that uh, color. But notice the uh, welcome dot search. Let me just do a cat minus n here, uh, minus n. Uh, the way I wrote this one is just basically to give you those options of saying that if the uh, number module two is equal to meter is zero, then uh, don't do the color, otherwise do the laugh out loud cut. So if it's odd, um, it's gonna color. If it is even, it's gonna uh, write it in white uh, text. As you can see, uh, all the even numbers are white text. The other ones are color. Similarly, if I just show you another one called piece.sh, and then a cat minus n piece.sh. These are written in bash scripting. As you can see here, clear screen more uh, piece to other side. Some of these ones I have de demoed on other videos. You're welcome to watch them. And if you need the, the actual script, I can uh, give it to you and uh, you can use it. But uh, a lot of this one information is written in bash scripting. So you could uh, run this one. Notice this one, if I say piece to other search, I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger on the because I'm using different um, type of resolution and make sure that you see everything there. So now you see that piece of the search it says, uh, thank you for watching our YouTube channel, my web university, and it gives the URL and then um, it writes all that presented by Wahid al all that information here, and then peace to you all. So then notice that if I run the same code again, the color changed again. And then depending on uh, the time that you run, the, you get a different output there. But it is really nice to just have these kind of things automated so you can just generate any banner. And then on the uh, Linux, you have this uh, uh, thing also, an, an addition to laugh out loud cap. There's a lot of other things that you can do, like um, show quick uh, fonts also give you all the fonts here. So if I just say CD here, clear the screen, I could do export uh, PS1 is equal, and I change the uh, prompt to just only show a dollar sign, that's it enough. And then and now I'm uh, going to be having short thing. Now, so if I just do the show pick fonts command here, then you see that there's a uh, list there. So if I say show pick fonts, arc, and then um, print print dollar sign one, then I just uh, get all the fonts uh, there information here. But if I just say, uh, I could uh, say that one or say cut minus D uh, and then get the colon uh, there minus F1. And then you get the information there. Similarly, if I just do this and then say, um, cut minus D delimiter. Uh, actually, first do a grep minus I for the colon. So we get the fonts there. If I do this one, I get the fonts there. Let me just uh, do this uh, before that. So the order is important. Now we have the font information. Now if I just say, uh, awk, uh, print a dollar sign one. Now I uh, don't have the column. I don't need the column. So now I have this uh, information. I could say, go ahead and do a while read a font. 
and then do something with it. Now I say something like um, piglet, which is the command minus C, and then I could say hello, just on that one. And then uh, I could just say echo using using um, font, dollar sign font now. And then that way I could say sleep two seconds. And then now I could say uh, fake left minus C uh, for the center minus F for the font name. Uh, font name is a dollar sign font. And then I could say the word hello. If you just try that one, that's good enough. And then I just say sleep one second and then done. Now it says using phone number, then it writes hello, then using phone big, and it writes hello. Using phone black, uh, uh, block, it's gonna do that in bubble, it does that digital, all of them, and then it prints the format that you want. That's the um, invert in, uh, like a inversion. And then the other one was a lean, and then the mini, which is a small one and everything else. Hello and the script and shadow slant. Isn't that neat? And you can just do this kind of scripting from the command line as well as having all the option on the graphical user interface uh, there. So all the fonts, uh, we go through them through one loop of this one. When the uh, end of it is done, it will just uh, display all of them. Now I have the prompt. And echo dollar sign uh, question mark means successful. Dollar sign zero means uh, dollar sign question mark returning zero meaning it ended successfully. So now if I show you on the graphical part of it, it's uh, here. Everything, all the application packages that are there is there as well as on this one, I say that these are the packages. Now, if I refresh this one, it's gonna say your system is up to date because we did the update from the graphical part, like right here, see? Your system is up to date. But if you wanna see the list of packages that you can install additional software under each of these categories, you have these options. Finance, socials, utilities, security, uh, education, games, everything that you click. If you are uh, into games, just go download uh, and play these games, install them, enjoy it. And then if you are into um, security, cyber security, uh, test some of these software like 1Password or anything else. So you just look at that one. If you are into uh, books, uh, online books available, uh, go to the learning or training uh, there. This is on Red Hat as well as Linux and everything, uh, these ones are optional. This is the list of uh, software that's already installed. We use already Chrome and then Firefox and, um, uh, you know, uh, Opera and a, a number of other ones, terminals. So you could do that one. I'm gonna uh, see this is already done. From the command line, if I just close this one and from command line here, I could just say uh, ID-UN, I'm Wahid, who am I? It's gonna show that one and I say, get end password and then uh, dollar sign ID dash you and that will also tell me that I'm Wahid. So if I look at that one and I say, okay, soon do a su dash uh, login as root, become root, what search user do, now ID dash you and uh, it shows that I'm a root. Who am I is there. If I say get in password and then um, back take ID dash you and there's all kind of Syntax, you can use these uh, arguments to pass it. So I'm showing you a number of them. And that's the flexibility and user friendliness of Linux also. So here, if I just do uh, clear the screen, say um, apt update, it's going to say my system is up to date because we just did it. So it says that apt uh, dash less dash dash upgradable. If there is anything upgradable, you run this command and it says that one, then you say up, upgrade, and then uh, we'll try to upgrade those packages that needs to be done. 
And then at the, uh, some point, when you go back to the graphical interface, and here, now I did that one. Now if I run up the upgrade, it says your system is upgraded already. The following uh, packages has been um, done, uh, zero upgradable, and everything is uh, there, done. Uh, so now you run this one. It just it still says this GIS, but this is not okay. This one is uh, kind of like uh, okay because on the ATC app directly, when you look at it, uh, this uh, CAD sources dot list it says what uh, or the uh, repositories that we can use for Debian to install software. Since the graphical interface uh, shows that one. If I look at this one and I say um, grip minus V, and then the first character that uh, start with a pound, don't show those ones. Now I see all the repositories on the sources of the list that are enabled. Then this is uh, uh, there. On the Linux side, you have to do a DNF uh, repo list, the dash dash enable or dash dash disable to check on the, those status. But a, a lot of these commands with grip and other ones are working. Remember that I was telling you that on the ATC OS dash release, it shows uh, it's 22.04 uh, Ubuntu, for example, on this one. If I just want to do a grip on this one, similar to that fine, I could say grip 22 uh, and then close it. it everywhere that is uh, 22, uh, it is going to just be showing uh, there. And if I say grip Ubuntu, then it's going to do, um, sorry, Ubuntu, I must have typed it, Ubuntu, like that. So, sorry, let me just correct it. Oh, grip minus I, Ubuntu. And then when you do this one, it's going to highlight all of them. But if you say, and let me just uh, look for more expression. E grep uh, is called expression or extended grep, uh, which is uh, extended global regular expression print. That's what is that is done for. Without the E is uh, global regular expression uh, print. And there's a fast grip or fixed grip string. So you could do uh, now piping saying that I want to do a search for 22.04 as, as well. And then you could just see that one is also highlighted. And if you say, I want to get also the name of the code, uh, Jammy Jellyfish. And Jellyfish, uh, for example, you could see that it's there, I highlighted it. But if you want only uh, that uh, word of want you don't want to see, it says, uh, look for a Jammy and je or Jellyfish. So it's going to highlight it, those ones that are there. And if you say, well, I want also Ubuntu, just type in Ubuntu. And you say uh, everything but those ones, then you say minus V. And it will just search for those ones. Okay. So the grep is similar to find and find a string. That's what I told you that I'm going to show you. I'm going to exit out of this one. And then um, I think we covered a number of uh, things. I want to show you uh, other uh, operating system like uh, Rocky and Red Hat. So I'm going to just uh, exit out of this and by just saying, okay, I'm done with it. Actually, on the file manager, I want to just click on it once and then look at the update and the say system is updated. So we're all good with it. And then here I go power off. I say log out first. Before you uh, shut down the machine, this is a virtual machine, you just uh, power it off. And then and now this system is down. I uh, don't need to worry about security or part of it or anything that I showed you an account or a login or root because the system is down. When the system is not on the network, nobody can get it. By the time I put this video, the system is down. So don't waste your time if you're trying to say, well, it's all the thing that you showed me. Now I'm going to bring your system down. I don't think if there's anybody that kind of a person. Everybody is very good uh, people and they, like I help you, you help me back by watching the videos and subscribing to our channel and make some nice comments so we can get encouraged to help others. So let's go to Algorithm, uh, which is a Red Hat machine. We reboot that one. 
So just uh, giving you a quick warning because I'm running out of time. I'm going to cover uh, uh, Red Hat uh, here. And then uh, since uh, Rocky is similar, uh, I will be very fast on the Rocky version because it's they're all the same thing. And so it's a waste of time to just go through the same uh, screen with a little bit of differences. The only difference is support and uh, kind of um, availability of uh, you know support for you. Otherwise, everything is the same. They both are Fedora distribution. They are nine point two Enterprise Linux and uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise. Uh, so I'm gonna log in here. And then nice interface, you can see the background and then open here terminal, you can open it. I've made the terminal to be transparent and the way you do it, you right click here and you go under preferences and then just go on colors and then look at the transparency here, it's just uh, changing the transparency to different level, you get different one. And all these texts and fonts and everything, I uh, made it so I uh, like it like that. So cat minus n if the COS dash release is going to just uh, show that it is there. And then here, if I just say um, cat EDC, this one is a uh, red hat, so uh, red hat dash release. And this file also tells me 9.2 enterprise Linux. And then if I say uname dash a, also uh, show the host name is going to tell me the name of the host name and then uname dash n. Also, the node name is there. You name dash s a system name. You name dash dash kernel name will give you the same thing. You name dash uh, r for revision or the built version. You name dash m for machine type. You name dash p for platform. You name dash o for operating system version. So on. All of that details are there. And then, if you just need help, you can do man you name. Uh, similar to the help of that one. And that man, uh, you name, I told you that I have it on my webuniversity.com under the man underscore PDF. And then I have, let me just show you. Um, I said, well, you're not going to be in front of a, a Linux machine or Unix machine or a Red Hat machine or Rocky, but I can give you the Linux Ubuntu. So if you're looking at all these um, 6,500 uh, technical documentation, whichever you want you click, you click on it and you get a PDF file. Uh, here, the documentation, read it. And based on the thing, you can size it to small or big, however you want it, you just read it. And then the size that you want, you adjust it. And uh, no matter which um, uh, kind of manual pages is for, Section one or section two or section three or section five, up to section nine, I have all of them available. So if you just look at these commands, uh, this is on the browser side. All you need is to uh, visit mywebuniversity.com. You need internet access in a browser and the rest of them is your desire to learn. So, but if you're on the Linux machine, obviously you can get the same information here. So user share man, and then man uh, question mark will give you all the list of the manual pages that are there. So if I do a word count minus L, it's about 11,798 just on the Rocky version of Linux. The one that I did was uh, on uh, Ubuntu, which was 6,500. So the additional software that are on Red Hat, there's a lot of other things. So under the user SBEN, just look at the SBEN. Uh, how many binaries are there here? Uh, 537. And then under slash has been, how many are there? Uh, uh, it's been, okay, let's do uh, user bin. And then that's another 1623. So there's user local bin and there's other directories that are uh, there. A lot of these commands are available for you that you can just uh, learn them. Um, for the uh, man pages there, what is uh, what is command is there, what is PWD, for example, man PWD or info frameworking directory. Any command that you learn, uh, say, let's say mouse command. 
mount command, it shows the, what is mounted on the system, or DF dash it shows you what is mounted on the file system. So you can do man DF and it will tell you the DF command. Or info DF is uh, going to give you more information on DF command. Or say what is DF, it's going to give you a shorter one. Or man minus K and keyword DF, it will give you keyword. Or um, say um, file, uh, uh, or say which DF, that's a binary, so then you say file user bin DF, you get that. One. On Windows, you will look at the properties of these ones, but then Linux, there are other commands that you can type in to get it. So like I said, uh, this one is a yum, yum repo list. This is the repo list uh, equivalent to uh, the other one. So if I just say um, DNF, a repo list, oh, a repo list, I must type it there. That's why it showed there. So yum repo list, and that is uh, showing you the repository listing here. Similarly, DNF repo list will give you the same thing. Why? Because um, if I say which yum, yum is symbolic link, user bin uh, yum is symbolic link to DNF dash k. And then uh, DNF uh, is also symbolic link to DNF3. But DNF3 is actually the uh, Python script. So you could say, uh, DNF list, and then it will uh, list all the packages that are on your system. And then you get uh, thousands of packages that are on the system. And then DNF is just right now generating the list for you. It is a lot of them. And so it is going to take a little bit of time, but uh, all of a sudden you could see it is fits everything there. And then uh, what you could do is do a word count on it minus L to get a word count on it. And you see it's uh, 25,651 in the packages. And then if you're interested in like, for example, grip minus I open SSH, you could see the package that are there that belong to open SSH. Similarly, if you're looking for uh, open SSL, then you get the packages or the Everything that you're looking for on the system, it is there. So on this command lines, there's uh, more information. So I'm gonna also do um, look at the other ones from the command line, uh, like I say sudo su dash. I'm gonna log in there, and then I'm gonna run a DNF um, update here, and then that would just uh, make sure that my system is up to date, and uh, I'm followed by a DNF dash upgrade, or just the combine both commands and one uh, format. So if I need to open another terminal while that one is running, I don't have to wait it on it. So multitasking, multi-threading operating system, that is what is good all about, right? So this one is finished, but I could have just run the command here. Since I'm running this one as root, and instead of DNS update, I could say DNS up upgrade, uh, DNF upgrade. So if, if there's nothing to upgrade, since I did that one, every time I run this command, it says your system is up to date. And if I do the uh, update, it says your system is updated. Because now my system is updated, I can also uh, verify that one through this activity and through the file manager here, uh, our software uh, update. So this is help and this is a software update. And then here you can see, I can see all the software that are available. Uh, so. Under the development, what is available, what is uh, under the creativity, or uh, all of these software are available. There's a number of them, and then work. So you, it's your choice. That's why I'm going past on them. Whatever you want to install, you just go there, install the software by clicking on it, and then um, just uh, enable it, and then uh, it's available for you. So, for example, on the learn, if you just uh, say, well, uh, let's uh, see if anything that it interests me. And uh, I'm going to say, well, at this time, I don't need anything of these ones, memory enhancement game. So I could say, well, install this game. You just click on it and it will install it. Or just uh, and the name is Blinken, you can run uh, DNF search for Blinken or DNF install uh, Blinken, it will install it. When it is un uh, uh, when you want to uninstall it, you do a DNF uninstall blanket. 
And then if you want to do it from the GUI, I just click on it, it will get installed. When it's 100% uh, done, it will give you a button to uninstall it by just uh, saying that, okay, this is uh, installed. Now, you see, it, you can open it or you can just uh, turn, remove it. If I just open it and I click on it, then this is the game. But I'm not gonna play game here because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to play game with you. <laughs> I'm going to just uh, 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 uninstall it. And then I just provide the password. So I uh, have the option to uninstall it from the GUI. And then that's an, how neat it is, right? So here, if I say um, DNF search, the name was Blinken, I believe, like that. I'm going to search for it. And it says that the package is available. So instead of search, I could just say install. And then I say, yes, go ahead and install. And it tells you that the name of the binary, the software, the packages that are getting installed. So I say, which Blinken, now it is there. So Blinken, uh, by just typing Blinken, is gonna just uh, load it onto memory. But notice I'm lo uh, logged on on the uh, terminal, I mean, as uh, root. So I need to run Blinken from here on the command line, and that would open it. Because my process ID that UN is here is uh, having a, a nicer display here. Uh, so the X term is available here. Here, uh, I'm root uh, here. I could run other uh, tools here, but if I just want to get out uh, under ID UN, I could just say uh, blinking and it's not going to just load it here. Say blinking here, we're not blinking. And it's going to say the, um, some of the thing that needs to be touched that was uh, having a DBus launch uh, export error. So I have to exit out of this one. Then I say blinking and it's going to work. Okay. Um, similarly, if I want to uninstall it, uh, say, uh, now I say the DNF uh, uh, list, uh, Blinken, since it's installed already, it's going to show that it is there. And if I say, uh, give me a, a, a search on it, and if I just uh, say, well, DNF dash dash help, what other arguments are there? Notice that it's uh, remove, repo, install, uh, uh, you know, everything, refresh, uh, get the version, all of those informations are here. So uh, you don't have to worry about uh, remembering all that commands. You can just run that and just get it. So if I want to do um, uninstall on it uh, or remove, I could say sudo because I'm not logged on as root. I say dnf or yum, either one of them, and then remove. So that uh, is going to prompt me for the password. Because I said the yum is a symbolic link to uh, DNF-3, it's going to run the same command, and it's going to remove it now. Now I say which blinking is not there. So now I um, say uh, app search, uh, not that DNF search blinking. It's going to just say, that package is available. Do you want to install it this time too? Yeah, it says sudo. This time I'm going to use yum. Yeah, install Blinken. So uh, just covering this one, and at this time I say, no, go, don't install it. I don't want to wait for it. But uh, there's a lot of other things you can do under the update and everything. Uh, so there's also, um, let's just cover some other ones on the, uh, I'm going to cover one more here. I could say extern and then open extern window. And then next term minus BG, I could say open up a uh, um, uh, dark blue, uh, um, dark green, that would be 20 here. And then these other one, uh, red, green, uh, blue. So uh, green is only 20 and the foreground is white. I could put the uh, town and then uh, the white would be F, F, F. Three of them is good enough. And then minus face of the font, and then would be New York, the font, and then minus font size, let's say 15. Uh, 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 15 is good. 
I could just get it and then here I could type in that commands, uh, calendar and then this and that. So if I close it and then I just up arrow here and I say, well, the dark green was not too much dark. I wanted 15 and it's a little bit darker, you could get darker. And then if you just say, uh, just ampersand and run it in the background so I could leave this one here and I could run more command here. X calculator, I could just run a, a X term is there, X uh, clock is there, X clock. Anything that is available for me on Ubuntu, it was available. So in this one, it is used to known clock and known terminal and other ones. So under user bin, uh, known, yeah, then uh, known something, right? So let me see if uh, known calc is there or not. Yeah, so known calculator. So if you say known, uh, known dash cal, Later, then it's going to open a, a terminal for that. Similarly, if you have a clock, and this one you could say clock. Uh, let's see if there's no clock. Um, no. Yeah, clock is not there, but uh, a calculator was there. And then um, there's a number of uh, tools that you could just do through, get it through X window or through a known. Uh, graphic interface. So here, the one that I did on the coloring things, I could just say, uh, let's uh, get a dark, uh, uh, dark uh, red. So that would be 15 here, and the green would be zero, zero. And then that would give you this, and then clear screen, and then df dash h and exit. Similarly, if you want to just get the uh, dark blue, uh, so this one was zero, this one would be 15. And now I have uh, uh, who uh, ID run level. You see, you can run every command uh, here that is available for you. Uh, your name dash show, um, let's say host name, um, cat ATC OS dash release. And then OS dash release release like that. And then uh, you could say, for example, cat etc host file, and then, uh, or just say host name CTL. All of these commands are available. Clear screen system, CTL status, and then get all the status of all the processes that are there. Um, run the top command, get the system output there. So a lot of the tools are there. I'm gonna exit out of this and then uh, show you uh, another platform. And then the activity I showed you already here and the help you can get uh, like manual pages with the help as well as on the file manager. If you click on the file manager, Firefox is similar to other ones. So you can go to the file manager and then under the programs, I can see all the directories and everything. So if I just want to see some binaries, you can see they have based on the extension, the type of the file they are and there. And then if you want to use uh, Python or IPython, everything that works on this one also works on the other one. So let's, let's just save some of them for uh, the uh, Rocky version. I'm going to say log out here, power off, power off. The system will reboot now. Uh, and then this one will close it. And then I'm going to minimize this one. While this one is shutting down, I could just say, go ahead to start off uh, the Rocky uh, version. And I'm going to say, uh, go ahead to start it off. So the graphic port in the uh, command line terminal port is very much like Windows. You should enjoy it and have fun with them. And uh, take care of them. I'm going to just um, show this one. Now I'm logging at uh, this one. I will type in my password. And then right here, you see the interface is really nice. If you go on the terminal, you open a terminal, host name, similar to another one, host name, chat, etc, os-release. 
uh, or uh, Rocky uh, Rocky dash release, and it's gonna tell you everything that you need to know on the OS release is similar. And then if you just say, um, who am I, ID, uh, PWD, calendar, date command, uh, who uh, minus R, run level, run level. So there's a number of things, system, CTL, uh, status, FSH, ID, and then uh, system uh, status of and uh, anything else that all the process that are running here, you could look at it, clear screen, run pop command, and then uh, clear screen, and then df dash h, mount command, cat, etc, fs tap file, all the contents are there, uh, df dash h, uh, f, uh, uh, hf, uh, the type of file is uh, t uh, for that one, you see, cat, etc, fs tap file, so df dash h p and then uh, this one is xfs so if i want to see only the root in, in the xfs then i get that one the two file system that are root uh, xfs and slash boot are uh, shown there and then if i just um, say uh, let's see on this directory do i have a programs directory yes i do and then list it Let's go to uh, C program on this one. We just looked at it and say uh, for demo for underscore uh, demo uh, one dot C. So that's a for statement that I wrote on C to print it um, some numbers. So you can look at it and say, let's compile that one. I'm going to RM for a demo uh, one if there's an executable already there or not. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's a four underscore. So RM uh, four underscore demo one. Uh, RM four underscore demo one. And now I say only one half for underscore demo one dot C. So if I say for file uh, four underscore demo one dot start, it says it's a C source code. Now I'm going to just compile that one. Well, GCC is the one that you want to compile the GCC version, I have already installed it. So I say minus O for output, four underscore demo one, and then four underscore demo one dot C is the source code. Now I just created, uh, if I do the same uh, file statement here, now it shows two files. One is source code and the other one is the binary executable. Uh, with this, you can see that there's another one is uh, for underscore demo one, it is just going to give you the output of that. So if you just gave the name of the output with this source code, you can give it any name. You can just say like this, and now we created for demo one, that same output. You can just uh, not give it any name, that will create a, a GCC a minus O. Um, you don't have to give minus O, now it creates an A dot out. And A dot out is going to give the same output that uh, the actual binary uh, you gave the name. So that is for C plus C. I mean C plus plus is similar and then Go language. Let's say go to the Go language, see what we can uh, demonstrate on the Go language. So here uh, the Go language is allo.go and which Go. And then Go is installed already so that uh, uh, way that you could do is cat minus n hello dot go. I installed golang by doing DNF search uh, golang. So I said DNF install golang and that is installed. So now I could uh, see the content of uh, that file hello dot go. But in order to see the output of it, I have to say go run hello dot go. And then that would run hello world. And then if I need some help on this one, I could say um, go doc FMT. Then it gives you the FMT. But if you wanna say, uh, give me the print uh, line function, and then it gives you that. If you say, give me the a scanner function, uh, not a scanner actually, S -S scan, that's a function there, you can get that one. So there, there similarly, 
on the uh, languages that are here. Uh, let's see, clear screen. Let's go to Java. On Java, you can see this one. What Java C is the compiler that I installed uh, through OpenJDK, and then a DNF uh, uh, and this, and then let's see, GERT minus I, uh, Java. So the Java version that I installed is a Java OpenJDK development uh, version. So that one has the Java compiler, which is Java C, and then also uh, the uh, Java binary, the, which is uh, the actual uh, Java virtual machine called Java. So this one is uh, taking a really long, but notice that it came out as I was complaining. So here I'm gonna just do uh, a Java program. So let's look at that, uh, one of the statement like uh, while demo. We look at the while demo, see what is inside there. While demo dot Java. This is the source code. So and the executable file is already, the bytecode is already created here, meaning that I can just say which Java and I could say what which uh, Java while demo, and then that would just uh, print out the program. Could not find while demo and uh, while is uppercase. That's why. So there has to be exact name of the name of the bytecode. So here, if you just do the executable, I could say rm while uh, demo dot class. And now I only have a while. Uh, uh, while dot uh, while demo dot Java, which is the source code. While while and this it says that C plus plus code, which is actually a source code of uh, Java. Uh, somehow the uh, compiler uh, or the operating system detects it as a C plus plus code, which is um, cat minus send while uh, demo dot Java. You can see it's a clearly a class of Java, and then while is the name. Well, demo, and then that's how we uh, do the Java with public static void main string. So I'm going to just do um, compile it now, Java C, and then I say while demo.java. Now it created that while uh, demo.class. So file while demo.class with a bytecode, Java bytecode, and uh, you could just run it through the Java virtual machine by you know, giving the name itself. Without the extension, it will just give you that. And then, um, so this is just a number of uh, programming stuff that you could uh, check also uh, there. And then shell scripting is similar. So if I go on the shell scripts here and just go under um, loop, let me just see if the same script works the same way here. Um, first, you have to have that laugh out loud cat. If I have installed it through snap, snap laugh out loud cat, then that's available, right? Snap a list and laugh out loud cat, it is available. So that means I could say ls minus l here or just say one of the command here uh, that I did, let's see clear screen here and less. And then I could say laugh out loud cat and it's uh, gonna print that color uh, kind of information. So the uh, demo here, I could run the welcome dot search and it does the time and time. And then similarly the piece dot the search, the piece dot the search and then it will just work the same way. Okay. So a lot of the code reusability or portability it's all there, I could show you this one. If I go on the Python directory here, um, and let's say on the Python, what I have here. Um, I don't have to actually show you the same script, uh, cat my sys.py, just to show you, I'm gonna show for the volatility that we did it on one platform, my uh, sys.py, I'm gonna say my sys.py, and then it says not enough argument. Now I'm gonna give the same argument that I did originally, it works. I give, um, uh, let's say five arguments and then let's say one, two, three, uh, four, that's five of them, five arguments and it will just do it. So as many arguments do you do, 
it will tell you how many arguments you did. And if the numbers are different every time, then it will give different output they, depending on what you did. And then uh, it will just read it. So that is there. And then if you want to say IPython, interactive Python, if I have installed it, aliases, you can see it here. Uh, let's say um, clear screen, uh, clear screen. Clear screen, it would not work here because uh, it is just uh, IPython. Uh, uh, the cell, if I could say import OS and then uh, OS.system, and then let's say run the calendar command or uh, just run the uname dash A or um, that uh, minus any PC OS dash release. Or I could just say uh, here, and let's see if I could just say uh, clear screen, which is inside the cell, does not make any sense, but let's try it anyway. Yeah, it does uh, uh, clear it because of OS taking over. But here I could say, uh, for example, command, uh, commands is equal, and then give this list of commands that I want to run, uh, host name, uh, who am I, command. So if I just say commands here, it will print that list and say, uh, type of uh, commands, you can see it's a list uh, data structure. So if I say for I, uh, for commands and commands, then I can say print uh, dollar sign CMD, it will just print the commands. But at the same time, if I say same for statement instead of uh, printing CMD, I could say system um, OS dot system and then run the CMD to execute the command and then um, I have to close one more uh, right here because when you do open uh, one, and uh, one is there and the other one has to close it. So it runs the commands that you do uh, there. And if you just do it with another one, notice that there's a status of showing for each command. If you don't wanna see that one, you have to do it differently. So you can say, um, OS.system, let's clear the screen first, uh, clear the screen. Actually, I'm not gonna clear the screen so you can see this one shows zero and the other one doesn't. So I say for, uh, for CMD and commands, and then I say uh, stream is equal, I'm gonna say um, OS.process open or pipe open, and then I'm gonna open this command, then I say, uh, output is equal uh, stream dot read and then read the output into uh, this and then print the output. So now um, uh, print all the output here and then you can see that it is uh, the local host and then the user and then that. So what depending on the, your command, the other one was giving these zeros and then this one, you don't need to do that. Okay, so I give you a number of uh, examples here, and you're welcome to just investigate further. Uh, Python dash uh, uh, three dash dash version is there. Uh, GCC is there. Dash dash version by default uh, does not come, but you can install the version, and then uh, through uh, YAML or DNF. And then um, G plus plus dash dash version is there, and then I showed you a number of those ones. Uh, clear the screen from this Python script. Let me see if there's another tool I could show you on the um, C, C++. Oh, let's do the OC uh, also and then we finish. Because we uh, used a number of other things or maybe we could do Rust uh, similar to um, C++. Uh, Rust is a very good programming language. Uh, does better memory management than C++. Uh, a lot of people say that. Uh, I have to test it myself to be honest with um, how the memory management. And uh, they say that uh, Rust does not have memory leak. Uh, I don't think uh, C++ has it either, but uh, sometimes depending on the programmer. And data files uh, for demo and then hello.org, hello. .org, hello and this. So let's look at the hello program, hello, uh, hello.org. And as you can see, this is script. Uh, it just, if I run it, hello.org, basically it does say hello. 
and the cat minus n, uh, hello.awk, it's telling me that I can also say awk and then say print, uh, print and then like this, syntax, and then uh, give the name of the uh, script called hello.awk would be similar to my cat command. Or I could just say um, echo hello uh, word, and then I uh, print this one, uh, the bash script that does a uh, hello word here. And then if I just want to do this one from uh, uh, output and then uh, just uh, print it into and the awk, I could say awk and then um, print dollar sign zero or just print the, uh, itself, that would do it. So whether you do dollar sign zero or just print, it prints the entire line. And then similarly, you could say um, awk in one line and then say um, print uh, dollar sign, uh, dollar sign or you just say hello word. If you try this one, since I'm uh, not reading from any command line, this will just be waiting for me because I'm not uh, doing anything uh, other than just uh, doing that. So it says, where is your actual uh, command that you're reading uh, from? Is it from standard input or standard output of a file? So if I look at the file, uh, hello.txt has this one, cat hello dot text, I could just say, well, it says hello awk inside of it. And then I could just say, cut that one and print uh, awk, print dollar sign zero. Uh, that would uh, do also the same thing, hello awk uh, there. And then if um, inside the hello dot text, I say hello Wahid or something, I could say echo hello, um, Wahid, for example, then um, now I need to send this one to hello.txt. So the same file that was uh, printing uh, hello hawk, and now it's going to say hello Wahid. Dynamically, whatever the content of hello.txt changed, the file uh, reads that one from the standard output and then uh, prints it. And so if I run this one, hello.awk, it ran the bash script, notice hello.awk, runs uh, the env, and it runs uh, the bash interpreter, then it calls awk and then say print uh, whatever is the content of the file. Since the content of the file is there, if I just run it by executable, then it's gonna say hello YD, and it does, okay? So uh, let me just go to Rust one time here, and um, Rust here. So another uh, programming language here that we could see is uh, which uh, Rust C is the compiler. If Rust C is not there, I need to install it and then I have to do stuff with it or not. Uh, but uh, let me, there's a binary already I have compiled it and it says that one hello.rs. Um, uh, and then um, to compile it, you run the Rust C which Rust C is not there, but I must have compiled it earlier. That's why hello is there. And then cat minus n hello dot Rust uh, is there, this short program. Rust is uh, much like uh, C uh, and C++ with power of uh, C and C++ and the uh, simplicity of Python. So the code is much, you don't have to import anything or, or include anything, you just, use the function, function name, and then the print line statement, and all the syntax, the uh, comments are similar to C, C++, and it uh, generate the executable for you, and you just do it. Which uh, man Rust C, it is not there, so uh, DNF search Rust C, uh, and it just shows that it is, uh, these informations are available. I must have uh, installed it earlier. Um, just uh, check on one thing here. Um, so 
I actually did a demo it. I don't need to uh, just go to each one of these ones for the compiler, but let me just, uh, you're welcome to look at another video here. Under the shells, um, loop and demo, more uh, epal dot, um, dot text. So let's see if I did the, uh, no. I was just checking to see if uh, some of these ones I had to uh, look at the installation. So do uh, su dash and then um, I'm going to try to just install um, DNF uh, search rust C. Clear screen DNF install rust C. Okay, so that's how you install it, and then now the package is coming there. Um, some of them are very simple. If the package name is not there, you have to find the right uh, repository and then do it. Now I have done it, which Rust C it is there. Man uh, Rust C, it, it tells you that the Rust compiler. So if I just uh, go to the directory that I was here, Rust uh, here, clear screen, RM hello, RM hello. And then since I install it, I can now say Rust C, Hello dot Rust, and then it will create the hello uh, program. Then uh, the timestamp, as you can see, is always twenty first, and it is uh, going to run there. So we showed you that one also. And uh, let's see if there's another program that I could show you under Ruby. So I'm not sure if um, yeah, Ruby is also there, and the binary is also and there for both of them, which uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby interpreter is there, yeah. It is there, so I could say uh, cat hello.ruby, and then that is just a put a st a statement. So to run it, you just uh, use the interpreter and say uh, Ruby hello.ruby. Because I'm not using the shebang on uh, the way I did it on this other file, hello underscore Ruby dot uh, Ruby. See that, sorry. Uh, the one uh, script that um, I gotta uh, type it first correctly, then talk. So sorry about that. Ruby dot uh, Ruby. The one the script you, here you uh, are doing shebang. So whether I say Ruby, the name of the script hello underscore Ruby, uh, Ruby dot search um. Oh, that is such that Ruby, uh, or just say uh, just the binary. Either way, this would work because the first line says run the um, shebang user ben emb. The reason I'm getting permission denied because this file has to be executable. So you say change mode uh, u plus x, uh, make make the user uh, executable. Hello uh, underscore Ruby dot rb. Now I could say hello underscore ruby dot rb and it will run. Okay. I'm gonna uh, be done with this one basically. It has been a really long video and I'm gonna have to uh, post it and then you will enjoy it. I hope uh, you do also uh, do me a favor and then make some comments and make some, you know, uh, Subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, that would uh, help me also uh, just uh, use my time efficiently if I see some comments that it's helping you guys. Take care. God bless you all. Bye-bye.